Welcome to the Code with Reza channel. My name is Reza and I'm here to teach you Python. Today I want to show you how to run your Flask app on Docker and Kubernetes. So many exciting things. Don't worry about the commands that I use here as I will put them in the description for your reference. First, we need to install Flask. For installing Flask, we need to go to command line and say pip install Flask. I have it on my machine, but if you don't have it, this will install it on your machine. Now the next step is creating, going to your main file and creating your simple app. So here you say from flask, import flask. Our app is an instance of the flask and we pass the name of our module and then we say app.route this and we define our method hello and we return hello world that's the simplest flask app that we can create so now we need to run the server so we say if name equals main then run the server because we need a server for these flask apps the host is 0.0 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0 and the port is 8080. This 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 means all network interfaces. So it listens for on all network inter interfaces on port 8080. So this is our app. Now we need to have a Docker file because we want to run it on Docker and then go into Kubernetes. So we need a Docker file. So let me create a Docker file here new file docker file and in here we say from python 3.11 means we need python 3.11 for this image our working directory is app you can choose whatever whatever you want and we want to copy the current directory into the working directory. We need in our image and container to install Flask. So this one is different. The first time that we installed Flask was for us to implement it, to be able to implement it here. But the second time we are running in uh, pip install Flask is for installing Flask inside our container. So we need both of them and then we expose port 8080 from our container and then we run this command which says python3 and main.py so we listen the our container will listen on 8080 we expose this port and when everything is uh, run um, ready when we want to run it this is the command that it runs python3 main.py it is required when we want to run it on docker so let's build the image for building the image let me clear this we need to say docker build dash t hello world flask and we say dot. I will add all these commands in the description. So you don't need to write it down now. So this is how to build an image. Enter. And it starts to build the image. It is installing the flask now. 
Okay, done. Now we need to run our image. When we run it, then we have a container. So let's run it. I need to say docker run dash p. We map the port 8080 on the 8080 on the container. And we say hello. This is the name of our image. World flask. So let's run it. Okay, so it's now listening on port 8080 as it shows here too. And for testing, I can use curl command. I can say HTTP in another tab. In this tab, the, dog, uh, the container is running. I go to another tab and I'll say curl HTTP slash slash localhost 8080. You can hear? Hello world. It's pretty exciting. We, we deployed, we built our image and run in, on Docker and tested it by kind of accessing it on Docker. But we want to do more interesting things. Now we want to deploy it on, using Kubernetes and run it after that, which is pretty interesting thing. So for this, we don't, we, we finished with Docker. So I will come here and stop this this we don't need this so from now on it's for running on kubernetes docker finished we want to run on kubernetes for running on kubernetes we first need to tag our image and push it into our docker hub for this you need to have a docker hub image uh, sorry account for having that you need to go to the docker hub website and create an account for yourself. If you don't have an account on Docker Hub, and if you think it's difficult, then please let me know in the comments below so that I create a video about how to create an account on Docker Hub. So let's create a tag from the image. How do we create a tag? We say Docker tag, we wanna create a tag. Hello world flask. This is our image. Here, Reza complete is my account on my repository and my account on Docker Hub. So slash hello world flask. So when you wanna create this uh, tag, Docker tag hello world flask is the same this part which why is Reza complete will change with your repository name xyz or whatever and the rest is also the same hello world flask so the only part that you need to change is this Reza complete with your information and now we create a tag after that we need to log in to docker hub how do we do that? You need to first have a use, uh, have an account on Docker Hub, and then on the command you should say Docker login. I have already logged in, so it doesn't ask me for username and password. But when you do it, look at here for me it says login succeeded. But for you, it for the first time it asks for username and password, and then logs you in, and then you can push your image to the Docker Hub, which is very important. So how do we push it to Docker Hub? We say Docker push the name of our image on the Docker Hub. Hello world flask. And it pushes for us to the Docker Hub. Normally it, it needs some time because it depends on your network speed because it needs to uh, push a huge amount of information like Flask, uh, Python, everything that you need. You need to push all of them over the network to Docker Hub. Okay, it's done for me. After we push the image to the Docker Hub, now we can go and work with the uh, Kubernetes. 
what we need is Kubernetes deployment file. Because Kubernetes deployment file is a big file uh, and it's a little bit tiring to write it here. I have it here. Uh, you need to create a file with the name deployment.yml or any name that you want. It doesn't have to be deployment, but I use deployment. .yml. Uh, I put this information in the uh, uh, description section. So you can just copy and paste it for yourself. You don't need to write it down. So basically there is a version, these are all Kubernetes uh, things, kind, deployment. We have lots of hello world flash, which is the name of our uh, image. We put it everywhere. You can use the same name. And the only difference between my version and your version is the image name. Your repository name should be something else. For example, XYZ, hello world flash. This is the only difference between my version and your version. The, all the rest should be the same. And the replicas is one, means I need only one version, one instance of this uh, application running. You can make it 100 if your system, if you have 100 server, then you can make this 100. We want only one instance. So we make it one and we come here, container port 8080. What is container port? Is the one that we, uh, on Docker file, we said expose 8080, which Docker listens on 8080. Then we are saying our container port is also 8080, so it knows that. And this is something that we pass to Flask to say that we want to do it as a run it in production. You don't need it, but let's keep it. And then it's a service, some metadata, it's the name of a service, leave it the same, you don't need to do anything. And the important thing is we have a load balancer here, which uh, listens on port 80 and sends to port 8080. So it listens to port 80. Why? Because in 80, we don't need to write down 80. It's easier for us to test it. Why target port 8080? Because our container is listens on 8080. So this load balancer listens on 80 and forwards to 8080. And then our container gets this information. All right. So uh, now that we have this deployment file, now let's apply the deployment file. Let's go to the terminal. Let me do this clear. Okay. So we say kubectl, this is for Kubernetes, apply dash f, which is for file, and deployment.yaml. It creates whatever it should create for us. So if you look at that, a deployment is created and the service is created. We can check to see if everything is right. We can say kubectl get deployments to see if everything is right. Yes, hello world flask. Ready one from one is ready. One from one is ready means we requested one and one is also ready. Up to date, available and everything is fine. Now we can look at the services and get our IP of the load balancer. So I will say kubectl get services. Okay, look at our load balancer hello world flask service. There is a load balancer. This is the cluster IP, 10 point blah, blah. What we need is the external IP of the load balancer. So this is our load balancer and the external IP for the load balancer is localhost. Local host. So what it means is I can come here. So at the moment, our application, Flask application, we created an image, we created a container, we pushed the image to the Docker Hub. In the deployment file, we mentioned that what the name of our image in the Docker Hub. So it goes to Docker Hub and gets everything from Docker Hubs. And then it deploys to a server and listens on localhost. So how do we test it? Easily, we say curl http slash slash localhost. Why do we say localhost? Because our load balancer is listening on localhost. Why we don't use any port here? Because in here, 
we are saying that load balancer is listening for 80 and 80 is the default port so let's look at here look hello world very exciting very exciting we deployed our app using kubernetes on our server which is mac now here and we use a load balancer and we are now connecting to the load balancer from the load balancer we are connecting to our service and we are running our application on on kubernetes now that you tested everything you can remove your deployments and services you can after everything is finished you can say okay clear you can say cube ctl delete service on which service hello world flask service this is our name of service look at here look at the deployment hello world flask service this is the name of our service so we delete it service deleted and again we say kubectl delete deployment what is the deployment hello world flask it is also deleted now if i say kubectl get deployments no resource found in the default DM services. There's no deployment. And if I say kubectl get services, there's only Kubernetes service, no other services. So that's all about it. If you're finding this video helpful and interesting, it's a good time to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my latest content. We want to do lots of fun things, lots of amazing things in this channel. So please uh, subscribe to see all those contents. Thank you for watching and see you later.